What is going on guys? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of maintenance on the crew cab. So just a little update. We're going to be driving the crew cab uh, from here in Utah up to Spokane, Washington this weekend to pick up the next project for the channel. So what we're going to do today, we have to uh, do the brakes on the truck. So I've got everything to do the front brakes, both rotors and pads. And then I have everything to do the rear brakes, but I don't think we'll have time to get those done before we go. So we'll do those when we get back. And then if you remember, we still have to install the hitch on the rear so we can pull the trailer back for the project and uh, hook up one of the seven prong plugs for the trailer as well. So a couple things we're going to get done in today's video, mainly the brakes. Um, I'll show you guys how to do that, how to pull the hub apart, how to disconnect the rotors from the hub. I'll show you everything you need and how to do it, so let's get started. Alright, so once we have the tire off, the first thing we're going to do is take the brake caliper off. Pretty easy process. just undo this quarter inch allen bolt take that out and then there's this little locking wedge that you pound out toward the outside uh, just get a hammer and a punch and tap that out and then you may have to kind of finagle it it may be stuck a little bit but the caliper should come right off after that As it gets loose, keep both hands on it and then just set it right over here on the bucket. And the reason I'm really doing this, for the past couple years with my truck, whenever I've braked uh, going about 20 miles per hour or less, I get just a slight shimmy in the steering wheel. Um, it still stops just fine, it doesn't really pull to one side or the other, but it just that shimmies a little bit. So. Um, that's why I'm doing this. We're going to see if this will fix it, and I think that's the issue. All right, so now we have the caliper off, sitting on the bucket, safely aside. Now, we have to take the hub apart. So this applies to if you have four-wheel drive, okay? So first thing, we've got these little Allen bolts. And so I'm going to take those out, and then this just slides right off. Okay, so all those Allen bolts are out. Here's the cover for the hub. Next thing you need to do, there's a Phillips screw right here. If you take that out, you can take this gear looking thing out. Not sure exactly what it's called, but we'll call it a gear looking thing. Okay, and that's got a little spring behind it. Okay, next we've got a snap ring right here. So you'll need some snap ring pliers to take this snap ring off. Pretty easy. Now this is the trickiest part and I've kind of found out a trick to doing this. So we need to take this out, but there's a big snap ring or kind of not even a snap ring, it's just a lock ring in there. Um, if you've ever taken the silencer ring out of an HX35, it's very similar. But it's long, the tip starts here, it goes around once and goes around twice, so it's super long. Alright, so I've got that started. So what you want to do is Kind of work it up just a little bit. There it goes. This one's coming out pretty easily. All right, and we've got that out. Now we're ready to take this out, which I guess we could call the hub itself. So easiest way to do this, 
get one of your allen bolts gently thread it in i like to actually use two so i can have equal force on both sides and there we go just like that if you look in there we've got this weird looking nut with kind of four little keyways on it so this requires a special socket i'm going to put a link in the description below for this socket on amazon and it works pretty well so let me grab that what we're going to do is take this first nut off okay and then i'll show you to that point so we're going to get it locked on there good so there's one now there is another identical nut back in there but first there's a little washer get a little pick or a screwdriver or something there we go And you can see this also has a little key on it to line up with that wa with the threads for the washer right here. Okay, and now we just need to loosen that last nut. There we go. So this is ready to come off. You can see it's loose. So when you pull it off, don't let it sag down onto the axle. You don't want to scratch that, okay? So grab it with two hands. Lift it all the way off. And set it down. If we reach in here, this is the outer bearing. Let's pull that out. Now, while it's sitting like this, we're gonna do the next thing. Now, there is a special tool to press these out. I don't have it, so here's what I'm going to show you to do. We're going to pound these studs out with just a sledgehammer. Make sure to give them a nice direct hit right on the tip. You don't want to mess up any of the threads. And it just takes a couple nice hits on each stud and they'll pop right out. So I'll show you that. Okay, so three or four solid hits on each stud and they'll pop right out. Now your hub is probably pretty rusted to the rotor. So what we're gonna do is give that a couple taps with the hammer as well. We'll stand it up on the side. Now for this, I'm standing it up on the rotor. I'm going to hit the hub, so I'm not going to use a metal sledgehammer. I'm going to use a dead blower or a rubber mallet, okay? There we go. Toss that out of here. Now, we've got to get the inner bearing out. And what the inner bearing's actually held in here, it's so greasy you can't see, but there's an oil seal right here. So we're going to pull that out. I'm replacing that. I don't know if you could even pull it out without ruining it. So. I'm gonna pull that out. I have a seal puller tool from Harbor Freight. You can use like a claw hammer if you want or a screwdriver. Um, it's not too hard to get out. Here we go. So that's trash. And then we can just pull out the inner bearing.
Okay, that is the complete disassembly. Now, in my research on doing this project, something that really annoyed me was there's a lot of videos on how to disassemble it and not a lot of videos on how to reassemble it, how to repack the bearings, how to put grease on the spindle and, and all those little steps. Um, I don't know if they assume that that's just given knowledge and everyone knows how to do that, but I didn't know how to do that, so I had to do a lot more research to figure that out. Anyways, we're going to put it back together now and I'll show you how. So first thing I'm going to do, and I won't show you this, but I'm going to clean up all this old grease. You can see it's all black. I'm going to clean up the grease off the bearings. We're going to all inspect those, but they should be good to reuse. So I'm going to clean all that up first and then we'll go from there. Now, before I clean that up, this is a very messy job, both cleaning it up and repacking everything with grease. So uh, filming this gets really tricky because my hands are all disgusting. I've got an expensive camera. So if you haven't liked this video yet, click the like button below. Let me know you appreciate that I'm going through this effort for you guys. Let's go. So I've cleaned most of the old grease out from in there. Uh, if you don't get everything, it's not the biggest deal, but try and get as much as you can. I cleaned all the grease off the spindle and then I wiped off as much as I could off the bearings as well since we're going to reuse them. So here's the order of what I like to do from this point. So I've got this uh, multi-purpose uh, grease for bearings and for uh, axles and stuff. So this is what I'm using. Um, so what I'm going to do is first get some, put it down in here. So you want it to go just under where this inner bearing sits. Okay, so I'll put some under there. Then I'm gonna put a nice little coat on the spindle and then I'm gonna repack the bearings. So I'll set the camera up and just kind of explain as I go on all those. So just get a nice glob of it. Okay, now this doesn't have to be super thick, but make sure there's a nice generous coat on the whole spindle. Get the underside now. There we go. Okay, now let's repack the bearings. So we're going to do the inner bearing first so what you're gonna do you'll see the the bearings kind of got a, a cone shape to it we're gonna force a bunch of new grease into this opening on the bottom side of the bearing so how you have to do that get a nice glob of it in, in one hand hold the bearing in the other hand and you're gonna kind of press it through into the palm of your hand and you'll see this old grease is kind of working its way out. So as that old grease works its way out, just kind of wipe it off and keep going. Okay, so we've got the inner bearing all repacked. So I'm actually just going to drop it in there for now. And then we're going to repack this outer bearing in the same manner. Okay, so the outer bearing's all repacked. We're not quite ready to put this one in, so find a, a fairly clean surface and just set it down until we're ready. Okay. We've got the inner bearing set back in here. Uh, so what we need to do now is put the new wheel seal in here. So here's the wheel seal. There's the part number. Just pick this up at Napa. Now this does have a specific way it has to go in there. So before I tell you about that, let me, I'm gonna clean the mating surface off of any grease. All right, so here's that seal. You'll notice there's uh, this outside where there, you can't really see inside the seal. On the other side, you can really see inside of there. So that side that you can see inside of there is gonna go inside the hub, okay? Now there is a specific press type tool you can use for this. I don't have it. So what I'm going to do is just gently 
Tap around the edges, make sure it seats evenly. And then just work your way around, gently tapping it in until the seal sits flush with the hub. And there we go. So that is in there. And now we're still not going to flip this over yet. So I've got my new rotor here. I'm going to set it on just like this. And this is the fun part. So we knocked these wheel studs out. We've got to knock them all back in. So first, just kind of set them in there loosely. Okay. Now what I do is I grab a half inch extension. Okay. I set it right on the stud and I get my sledgehammer and pound away, kind of working in a star pattern, uh, working all of them in. Okay. I'll get to that point and then I'll tell you because they're don't be frustrated they're not going to go all the way in and you'll be able to tell so I'll catch up with you once I get those pounded in. Now before you start pounding them in as well make sure that you've got your hub sitting on something kind of soft. I'm actually going to go grab a couple more pieces of cardboard so it's a couple layers thick because you don't want to damage the edge or the lip of your hub okay so that's important. All right, so I've got all those pounded in. Now I told you they're not gonna see all the way and here's how you can tell. If you lift up on the rotor, you'll see and hear there's still play between the rotor and the hub. But don't worry, I'll show you how to torque those down and get them set in nice and well. Okay, we are ready to flip it over. Okay, now we need to put the inner bearing in here. So remember we packed that. Don't let it go in upside down. There we go. There we have it. That's all put back together except we need to torque those wheel studs down and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But it is ready to go back on the axle. Again, be careful as you put it up on there because if you catch this on one of the bearings, it could push the outer bearing out and you don't want to scratch this surface on the spindle. Oh righty, that is on there. The bearings pushed all the way back in there. It's set in there. Now real quick, the nuts are not exactly the same. The inner nut you'll see has this little tiny uh, peg on it. That peg needs to face out, okay? Because one of these holes from this nut will fit right on that. All right, we've got that first nut cinched down in there. Okay, just hand tight. You can see there's still kind of play in the hub, but it spins nice and free. So here's what you're gonna do. Get your ratchet with your socket on it, spin this, and slowly just go tightening it until it doesn't spin very easily. Once you reach a point where it doesn't spin quite as freely, what you want to do is back it off a quarter turn. There we go. Now you'll hear 
little jangling and that's just the rotor because it's not cinched down here okay but the hub should be nice and tight on there and remember this little slot has to line up with the keyway and the threads okay and then grab your outer nut and this one can be tightened quite a bit more All right, now we need to put our locking hub back in. I'm gonna put just a little bit of grease on it, but with locking hubs, you don't wanna pack them full of grease or they'll have trouble engaging and disengaging. Good. Now we've got this crazy lock ring. So again, the easiest way to start it is to kind of just, almost like you're screwing it in there, just feed it in. All right, we got that back in there. So now we need to put this snap ring back on here. Okay, and then we've got this little gear with the spring behind it. And then we have that Phillips head screw. We've got the cover. with our six hex bolts. All right, hub is all back together. Spins nicely. Now we have to torque down these studs. So let me show you how to do that. So we're gonna torque all these studs down. So here's what you're gonna do. Grab one of your lug nuts and thread it on, okay? And then put your screwdriver in that vent in the side of the rotor so it's blocked right here. So I use my T-wrench. And essentially you're using the lug nut to squeeze the rotor and pull that stud through. So that last little torque on it, bring it back up with the screwdriver there. Loosen it, grab your drill, take it out, and then move to a different stud. Usually, suggestibly, an A star pattern. Get this one kind of at the top. Thread it on by finger and then with the drill. All right, those are all torqued down. We are ready to put the brakes on. So we've got new pads, this is the caliper. So before you put your new pads in, in order to fit over the new rotor, you're going to have to get a C-clamp or like a ball joint press or something and clamp this back in. That's the cylinder in your caliper. Okay, so I'm going to, I actually have a ball joint press kind of clamp thing that I'm going to use. We'll clamp that in, throw the new pads on and throw the rotor back on. And you can see that that cylinder is pushed back in there now. So the only, the one thing you need to be cautious of is how much fluid is in your brake reservoir. Because if you've got that full and you push this in, force it in, you're going to overflow or, or blow the seal on that reservoir. So be cautious of how much fluid you have in there because this is going to push all that pressure back up into the master cylinder. Okay. 
there we go. All right, so this little wedge can be kind of tricky to get in here. So one way I'll do it is stick a screwdriver in here, lift up, but also push in and push in on the screwdriver and it gives it enough room. And then just until you've got this hole lined up with the groove. Get your Allen bolt. Okay. Whew. There we go. It's all back together. So that was quite a project. So all that's left to do is to put the wheel back on, which I can do. And I'm sure you guys don't need me to show you that. And then she's good to go. So I'm going to do the other side as well. I won't show you that. I just wanted to be very detailed and show you how I do this. All right, let's go get the hitch put on the back. And then we are going to be ready to rock and roll to go pick up the project. So let's go. All right, guys. I got the other side done with the brakes. Took it for a test drive and... It stops wonderful now. No shimmy in the steering wheel, nothing, no pulling. So really happy with that. Let me show you how the hitch turned out. So I think this hitch is from a second gen, like I mentioned. Uh, it hangs down just a little lower than what I would like. Um, but it'll work for now. And honestly, the rear of my truck sits up so high I'm okay having it hang down just a little bit. I, I won't need quite as big of a drop hitch in that case. So anyways, we are hitting the road tomorrow. Uh, long trip from Utah to Spokane. We're gonna stay a couple nights in Boise as well. I'll vlog the whole trip on the way and on the way home and uh, we'll see you guys in that video. Thanks for the support.